The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You got about three and a half hours until Chairman Powell starts be, uh, speaking. That may be when the market action really picks up this morning. We're at lower levels, negative by eight points, coming right into we where we were at 3 a.m. Eastern Time. You're talking about a spike low overnight of 41.13. We're at about 41.15 right now, correlating pretty closely to the spike low we had at about 3.30 yesterday. Spike low to about 41.10. Yes, 41.10. So within a few points of where we are right now, trading at 41.14, negative by 10 points. It's been quite a run to start the year for the markets, maybe causing a little bit of uh, losing a little bit of that bluster for those markets. Uh, nonetheless, we see what the chairman says today. Interesting how things can tweak so quickly. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks coming up after the break at 9.15. Uh, interesting. Last time we spoke to Kevin, it was Thursday. Think about how quickly this market is moving, folks. Back things up on a five-day. Um, you had the chairman on Wednesday. You had Thursday's action. You had Thursday earnings. Friday, non-farm payrolls, the digestion of Alphabet, Amazon, and Apple. Nonetheless, we'll see where we go from here. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 13 points, 12,502. The Dow's off 130 this morning, 33,800. Bitcoin, all things considered, holding up relatively well, above 23,000 this morning. How about crude? Catching a little bit of a bid, 7507. You talk about volatility in that crude market, man, and volatility in gold as well. Gold just kind of chopping around between about 1880 and 1890. Right now, we're positive by $2 on the session for the gold contract at 1881. And we jump to notes and bonds. And the trend is pretty much continuing right now. We get the 10 year negative by three ticks. We got the 30 year negative by 13 ticks. You take a look on the daily basis. Quite a reversal over the last couple of days, talking about lower price, higher yield. That's going to be the conversation. We get the chairman three and a half hours from right now. Chairman Powell, he'll be talking. Be interesting to see what he has to say about that jobs number, right? Haven't heard from him since we got 500,000 plus jobs added. That, of course, adding fuel to the conversation. And that's where we're going to pick things up this morning. And we're going to talk, th talk about things with, let me make sure I got the right one. Is that the right one? Oh, come on. Yeah, it's going to be the right one. Either way, that was the article I was going for. Uh, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, he is a voting member, okay, of the Fed. He's turned into quite a hawk recently. Strong jobs data shows need for more hikes. Where does Chairman Powell fall on that one, man? It was a surprise number. Would love to get into his head. The market's going to try to get into Chairman Powell's head this afternoon. And I don't think he takes questions. I think it's just a speech, right, an economic forum. So not exactly the same deal as when you have a press conference with a Federal Reserve announcement. Nonetheless, he has time to get his remarks in order. He has time to get what he wants to convey to the market, number one, about how the market reacted to his speech and press conference. Was that the way he intended? And number two, if it was, has things has anything changed since you got that jobs number? Because think about what Mr. Kashkari here is saying. Uh, he's still at around 5.4%, okay? Talking about the Fed funds target, where he sees it, okay? Um, that's where he is in December. No one should overreact to one report. There's always a but, right? When somebody says something, there's always a but. Uh, that adds a little bit of a dynamic, man. But the underlying strength in the services sector of the economy is still very robust. And that's where I think a lot of us are focusing our attention. I, too, was surprised by the big jobs number. It tells me that so far we're not seeing much of an imprint of our tightening to date on the labor market. There's some evidence it's having some effect, but it's pretty muted so far. I haven't seen anything yet to lower my rate path. We need to raise rates aggressively to put a ceiling on inflation, then let monetary policy work its way through the economy. We can always back off. So we're having to let inflation guide policy 
rather than our models guide policy, right? Now that was where, I think that was on CNBC this morning. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe, yes, CNBC. So he was on CNBC this morning. Those were some of the quotes that he had, pretty important quotes. You could see, uh, they have no sound in the den, Al, if you could help them out, pal, all right? Uh, no sound in the den. Thank you. Uh, no one should overreact to one report. So this is where the chairman could totally align with this type of thinking because it seems pretty reasonable in terms of what they're talking about. And I would say that Chairman Powell is going to let inflation guide the Fed as well. He is not going to get caught up in the models and go down in history as a Federal Reserve chairman who got off track by models that were incorrect and led to general inflation taking hold and destroying the savings, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, in a separate interview on CNN, so we just went over CNBC, now CN CNN, Kaskari said the cooling of goods inflation, especially food prices, was a good sign. There's that word, but but that a too hot job market is going to make it harder for officials to bring down prices. Yeah, I would say so, man. I mean, you got the PCE down, you know, 5% in December, down from a high of 7%. But yeah, pay attention to it, man, because when you look at those numbers, you talk about 500,000 jobs added. Well, we got the chairman speaking today. He'll be speaking at about 1230. We'll see where we go from there. And uh, yeah, that'll be the first time that he gets to make some remarks since that jobs number on Friday. Okay, jumping next, right? We got to stay on rates, man. City, they're talking about prepare for the risk of Fed rates hitting 6%. Now, the reason why I started off with Mr. Kashkari is you get some context here in terms of right now, we're at 4.5 to 4.75. Okay, Kashkari is looking for basically three more quarter basis point hikes, okay? Because his range gets you to 5.4. Be aware that the risk does exist, does exist to get above that level, okay? Um, yeah, and this is, I'm not familiar, I'm pro I, I would mess up that main name if I tried it. Traders are ignoring the risk of a higher than expected peak in the U.S. rates that may result in a painful sell-off in both bonds and equities, according to that city's head of Asia-Pacific trading strategies. Uh, to be bullish on equities here, you'll need to see the dollar fall another 10% from here, and that will be difficult. The Fed's going to raise rates in a way that the market doesn't expect. Of course it is. What I'm advocating is to continue selling on equity rallies, um, and that hasn't worked out yet, man. But you talk about where you are, stress test level, 6%, overnight index swaps. Look how far down we're going. We're getting into March of 2025, September. I mean, you're talking about a straight path down from December of this year. Now, what, what has happened recently is that at least the market has pretty much gotten into step with the Fed in terms of not really anticipating as many rate cuts, or if any, towards the end of the year. But boy, it falls off pretty steeply after that. And I, I imagine that the conversation is going to shift pretty quickly as time flies, folks, to the end of 2023 in terms of what the market is looking for in 2024, okay? Because Federal Reserve projections alone, yeah, you got a lot of cuts, man, coming down. If that's the case, are we going to have 3.4% unemployment as the, the Fed is just cutting aggressively? I don't know. It's interesting time. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hanks. We'll get his take on the market. We'll get his take on Mr. Chairman coming up at 1230 today. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got the S&Ps down about 12 points right now, trading at 4110. NASDAQ 100 off about 14. We got the Dow off about 158 right now. Excuse me. One second, folks. And we jump around to crude. Crude up 75 cents at 74.85 this morning. And we let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV, 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the whole team at TD Ameritrade Network. They got some great guests, folks. We're right in the middle of earnings season. We got some good companies coming out this week, just like last week. We have the chairman speaking today as well. And he's going to be speaking right during that 12 o'clock hour during fast market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, this is going to be a little bumpy uh, show today as we report kind of live on the air of, of what the market's doing as Jerome Powell speaking. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to cover it as live as we can on the air, Tommy. What's he going to say about that jobs report on Friday, Kevin, in the conversation that uh, he had on Wednesday and how the market interpreted it? It seems like it's only a week ago less than that he talked and there's a lot that he may have to talk about already coming into that speech at 12 o'clock. Well, you know, when that number came out on Friday, I did talk about on the air and several times about how the Fed speakers are going to get a hold of this number. They're going to, uh, you know, have to be more hawkish. And sure enough, you're hearing Raphael Bostic talk overnight on Bloomberg about how we may need, need to lift borrowing costs higher than previously anticipated. This morning, Neil Kashkari said he's okay with his highest uh, dot plot number, which is 5.4% for the overnight rate. So there's a lot going on here. And so far, the parade of Fed speakers have all been pretty hawkish uh, talking about that number and its effects on the overall market and, and uh, inflation in general. So it's going to be interesting. You know, I thought the market overreacted what Jerome Powell said at the last FOMC meeting and his comments. They interpreted it as more dovish than I thought it was, but the market does what it does. And so we have to trade the market that's in front of us. We'll see now, today, and it's, I think, 1240 Eastern, 1140 Central time, if he comes out at, in a different tone, more hawkish, or does he stay the course here? So, I think the market, as it opens uh, this morning, is going to wait and see how Jerome Powell sets the table for the rest of the week, Tommy. 
it's, it's a great summary of what's going on, man, because it is interesting in terms of I had some similar thoughts of myself in terms of that acceleration. Um, there were, of course, some strong statements from the chairman during that press conference. Man, he said something like the disinflation process has begun or something like that. Boy, my ears perked up. I'm sure many did um, as the market. We're almost 100 S&P points off of the high of Thursday, though, so we still got volatility in mind, man. We still got earnings, Kevin. We haven't really talked to you since Thursday, of course, so we had all the big, uh, not all of them, but we had Alphabet, Amazon, Apple on Thursday, Friday, the market digesting those numbers. What did you think of the Apple acceleration and kind of the Amazon pullback on kind of some tough numbers for the big three coming out Thursday night? Yeah, I thought it was very mixed results, right? A Apple, you know, the initial reaction to Apple was down and then a strong rally off of that, which is similar to what Microsoft did. Remember when they released earnings, Amazon wasn't the same story. They had some more weakness in the growth of AWS and also, I think it's two different stories from two different firms. So, yeah, you know, wild. digital ad spend is important with some of these cool. companies and how, you know, I, I think that Meta, when it came out, was way cool. overdone. That's why you had the rally there. But, you know, today on today's show, we're going to look at some of these names. We're going to look at PepsiCo, a consumer staple, and what they're doing in food. We're going to look at Chipotle uh, in cool. terms of fast food. We could also do Wendy's today. We could do Yum Brands today, but we're going to trade Under Armour in the final nice. segment. So today on Fast Market, we're going to look at PepsiCo, Chipotle, and Under Armour, Tommy. And Kevin, for the listeners, the viewers out there that aren't familiar, tell them about your history with PepsiCo, man, because it's always nice having some experience, and uh, you have some experience with Pepsi. Yeah, I was the specialist in PepsiCo, and I traded it from, oh, 1986 to 2006, standing in the pit at the CBOE, so, and in, including during that time, I was the specialist in PepsiCo options. So, yes, I have a history with PepsiCo. I was there. Here's some something you might not know, Tommy. Yum Brands. Uh, KFC, Taco Bell, and uh, Pizza Hut was at one time owned by PepsiCo, and they spun it off to Yum Brands. And so when you look at PepsiCo and Yum Brands, I traded both of those. Uh, as they spun off. So, yeah, PepsiCo is a consumer staple that is an interesting company because it's named PepsiCo, but most of its income is made in salty snacks and food and Frito-Lay. So, yeah, that's always a fun company to look at, especially for me. So we're going to trade pe uh, PepsiCo today, and then we'll look at you know Chipotle, that if you look at their chart, they've had a meteoric cool. fourth quarter in January. So, uh It'll be interesting to see if that is. Why? Because, frankly, they've been able to raise prices along with inflation. And when you raise prices, your margins go up. So they've been actually improving. So a lot going on there. And then we'll look at Under Armour. This stock that was almost left for dead, Tommy, got down to $6 and change. Now it's over 12 uh, So a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of fun conversations they have today. Pretty cool, man. And I was just looking at Pepsi, and you, you've – given us quite an education over the years, man, of course. But I remember you talking about, and I just pulled it up on the Thinkorswim platform. I jump over to the Analyze tab. I got the earnings up, so they're out with their numbers on Thursday. $172 stock about, Kevin. And you got a, a market maker expected move about $3.76. Now, we know that past performance is not always indicative of future results. But for people that look at Pepsi there, what is that? Just more than about a 2% move. Historically, could you just talk real briefly, maybe the listeners again, about Pepsi and the volatility as they come out with their numbers, a company like Pepsi um, coming out with their numbers in a couple days? Maybe a tease of what you guys will be talking about on Fast Market at 12 today. Yeah, we don't talk about always. We don't talk about never. But uh, there, there's a you know Pepsi normally is not a big mover on earnings. They usually come out pretty in line. They're a consumer staple. They don't put up you know flashy volatile earnings. But the stock that that doesn't mean the stock can't move. So sometimes it does. But history tells us that Pepsi's not a big mover on earnings will probably put on a strategy that's range-bound, Tommy. So, yeah, a lot going on there to look at. But, yeah, Pepsi will take us down memory lane. We'll see if how, how it comes out once earnings are out. But Pepsi is always a fun one to look at because, really, when you break down Pepsi as a company, you learn more about it. That it's unlike Coke, which is all liquid, 
Pepsi's uh, you know, a large portion of their income comes from food, mainly salty snacks. And I tell you, man, Fritos, they, that might have been my number one childhood snack, man. I could eat one, two, three bags of Fritos. You put them in front, you just don't stop, man. Uh, Pepsi, a $236 billion company. Kevin, we appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. We look forward to the show at 12 o'clock. You'll have some live action going on, folks. Check it out today, 12 o'clock. Chairman, he's talking at 1240 Eastern Time, I believe you're correct. And uh, look forward to the show, Kevin, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, you heard it there, all right? I have learned so much from Kevin over the years uh, doing shows at TFNN, doing interviews at TFNN. Experience. There's nothing like experience, folks. You want to listen to that experience, check out the show. They're talking about Pepsi today. Uh, can't say enough about Fast Market, the education, what they go through. Today's a good one, man. Chairman Powell talking during that 12 o'clock hour. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the market open. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and technique to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 11 points to kick off trading this morning. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by five. The Dow off 187 right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Let's drive it down to a 15-minute chart. You got Amazon opening the day down another 1% right now. 101, uh, 100, 101, we'll call it. $101, Amazon down about a buck 31. We jump over to Apple. Excuse me, Apple down about two-tenths percent today. Google shares up about four-tenths percent right now. We jump over to Tesla. 
Tesla shares up about three tenths percent right now. And let's jump to some of the other stories. You talk about market breadth. Interesting one out here from the journal. Market breadth is improving as more stocks join the rally. You got to pay attention, man. Uh, Meta, Apple, Microsoft, broken through the long-term trend lines. We just talked about two of those equities, right? Check it out right here. S&P 500. I'm going to zoom in to see this. Blow it up a bit. S&P 500. Percentage of stocks closing above the 200-day moving average. You talk about quite a spike, man. January's just spiked everything. You had about 10% of equities hitting that number. We're pushing almost 80% now of that number. You jump down to where we are in terms of moving averages, okay? This is the S&P 500 again, and you have the 50-day moving average kind of in the bright yellow line. We should use some better better colors here. Uh, the 200-day is in the light, light one here. Either way, the market breaking through both of them above that price point. Technical levels, we'll see where they go from there. Um, Tesla, one of the biggest laggards last year, up 58% this year. Uh, you had Amazon, up 22%. I wonder if that's still including all the demise that it had last week on their numbers. I think it is. Alphabet, up 17%. We'll see where we go from there. All right, I'm going to jump around to probably a, a, a brother from another mother cousin, Tim O'Brien. He writes some good opinion pieces over here at Bloomberg. Another fine O'Brien out there. Uh, Timothy, Tim. Not Tom. Tim, one letter off. Max Match fixing has existed for centuries. Gambling apps are making it worse. Folks, wherever there's money, all right, the crime's going to follow. Uh, Max fixing has been around since the Olympics. Online sports betting is just making it more common. They make the analogy. He makes the analogy in here talking about, well, as long as there's gambling, there'll be match fixing. Just like as long as there's stock markets, there'll be insider trading folks okay now if you've watched this program for long enough i have a pretty extensive history playing online poker really back in the heyday when it really accelerated 2002 2003 2004 i graduated college in 2002 i think moneymaker won the world series of poker right around then maybe 2003 2002 2001 it took off so from about the hay of day of 2005 to about 2015 where the heyday of online poker the point being there was always massive scandals in online poker. Why? Because it was, a, it was an unregulated industry ripe with money. And whenever there's that much money around, folks, people are going to cut corners and try and take that cash. It's that simple. Now, what they talk about in here is that you got huge numbers of legalized gambling taking place. You have apps that are taking place. You have investigations everywhere. You have games like Snooker, a cousin of pool and bill billiards. Um, with roots in British Raj, was a boutique, almost backwater pastime, no longer, okay? And it might even be included as a sport in the upcoming Olympics in 2024. What they also talk about in here, which is why I want to get to this part of the article, which I found most intriguing, okay, because this should be plain as day obvious. <clears throat> if you're betting on some weird game in some remote part of the world where the people that are playing that game have no financial incentive and they can get bribed, it's going to happen, okay? But that's what's happening everywhere right now now the super bowl okay last year 31 million americans bet about 7.6 billion dollars on the super bowl now they go into the obvious reasons why the super bowl won't get fixed number one the people playing the game are all millionaires mostly i'm generalizing number two the people that run the games are billionaires talking about the owners of the teams the nfl themselves right there's no incentive to fix the match because they're making so much money by running the match itself that's the inherent kind of that's the only way really to protect it soccer however remains the mother load of match fixing worldwide so many matches have been fixed that they can't list them all in the article in 2018, they talk about Albania's leading soccer team was banned for competition for a decade. That's the entire team, almost a la Russia, right? The World the World Cup, you think the Super Bowl is a big gambling event? And what happens, though, folks, it's kind of not compare, fair to compare one game. I wonder what the, the main championship game of the World Cup had been on it. If they had a, you know, a month-long, and they kind of do, the NFL playoffs, right? But if they had a month-long tournament with 32 teams from every country playing football, you can imagine what would happen. $160 billion is what's get, what gets wagered on the World Cup. There is so much legitimate money to be made from the World Cup, but it, it would be difficult for match fixers to pierce its armor. Okay, 
still qualifying matches are where things get tainted, okay? The World Cup itself is pretty protected because the players that are playing in the World Cup, they make a lot of money if they win outright. Uh, the country makes so much money. There's so much pressure, et cetera, okay? But qualifying matches with a bunch of small countries, that's where there could be a big problem out there. But the part I really wanted to get into is what we have going on here. And here's the, the part I had our, our, excuse me uh, highlighted to get ready. The NCAA, U.S. colleges and the NCAA remain ripe targets for corruption as the sports gambling boom accelerates. The quote here, and I'm not even sure who it's from, but I agree with it. If you needed to design a league that would, be, would incentivize corruption, it would be very difficult not to do a better job than the NCAA, he said. They don't get paid. A few of them get their image rights. Some of them get scholarships, but those scholarships, in most cases, instantly voided if they get injured. How does that make sense, man? Right? Like the schools don't have enough money to give a kid a scholarship and keep it there if they get injured playing the sport that they got that scholarship for. It's a recipe for disaster. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, folks, if that's the system that stays in place. Now, listen, changes are being made. The name, image, and likeness laws, regulations that are taking place right now allowing athletes, especially at the top echelon, to profit. That's helpful. But think about the amount of NCAA athletes that are out there, folks, okay? And think about the amount of competitions and how basically most of those athletes are not making any money at all. Uh, for its part, the NCAA clearly recognized the problem. Sports wagering has the potential to undermine the integrity of sports contests and jeopardizes the well-being of student-athletes and the intercollegiate athletics community. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, now, of course, they prohibit student-athletes from gambling and says it closely monitors potential problems. But as more colleges forge lucrative partnerships with gambling companies and bring online wagering on campus, some of this messaging may be a wee bit confusing for students. So hopefully we do something for that, man. Gambling is never going away, folks. State, states got kind of their, their taste of that gambling tax revenue. It's not going away. And we got to protect those student athletes because it's only going to be a matter of time until you have an athlete on a team that is facing some type of financial hardship or maybe some type of blackmail. They get squeezed, right? They're making no money anyway. They're almost done with their collegiate career. They're not going to play professional sports, et cetera. It's a very easy situation. And when you have gambling as ripe as it is, hopefully they protect those those athletes somehow because it's going to be a force that's going to come into it, especially in the collegiate front out there. All right, let's jump around to what else we have pulled up here. We talked about sports betting. We talked about, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about ETFs tracking politicians. Yeah, you want to talk... Uh, We'll, we'll finish this one. Uh, we'll talk about this when we get back. Tracking lawmakers stock tradings with ETFs. The ETF world continuing to innovate. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, we're going to kick things off with the lawmakers stock trading with these two ETFs. Hopefully my producer can tell me that we're live, are we? My bad. We're talking about Nance and we're talking about Cruz. Okay, so you have the Democratic one and you have the Republican one. Apologies for that. We'll do it all again. The Unusual Whale Subversive Democratic ETF Nance and the Unusual Whale Subversive Republican ETF Cruz. Equity-based portfolios. Disclosures from members of each party and their spouses. You get to choose, Democrat or Republican. Gotta love it in today's divisive world, right? We believe members of Congress have more information than the rest of us. This is talking about uh, one of the portfolio managers. And what's interesting here is, so number one, you have an annual fee of 0.75%, okay? The Nance portfolio is looking at 800 stocks or so. The Cruise one has more than 500. Congress's holdings overall outperformed the S&P 500 by about 1.2% in 2021 and by roughly 17.5% on average in 2022. Now, the interesting part here, and I wonder how it exactly works in terms of how these funds, when they do it, when they trade, right? Because what happens is, is that a number of bills designed to overhaul or update the 2012 law governing these disclosures have largely stalled. Current rules state that members of Congress must disclose any transactions valued at more than $1,000 within 45 days. Well, what are these ETFs doing? Are these ETFs, and they probably are, they're probably trading at a delayed clip. So Congress may have outperformed the S&P when they make those trades on the day they make them, right? But tell me the numbers if you make that trade when they are disclosed, I wonder what they are, because I believe that's probably how this ETF has to function in some capacity. Now, you got 800 stocks in Nance. You got 500 stocks in Cruise. Easy names to remember. It's good marketing. They name them well, Nance and Cruise. Uh, joint effort between investment firm Subversive Capital and Unusual Whales and Options and Equity Data Platform. The ETFs buy and sell securities based on the analysis of the disclosures by unusual whales. So, forgive me, I gotta turn that phone off. Everyone's calling me this morning. Um, nonetheless, it'll be interesting to see how they go. Let's see if they're trading yet. I'm not sure if they are. Nance, Nance opens at 25, right? I believe so, and Cruise opens at 25. Yeah, is there a Kramer fund? I'm gonna go inverse, see where we go. Uh, but almost, I wonder how you get away with this though. In, in terms of, in the land of financial disclosures, you know, I was registered at one point with a Series 7, folks, and uh, a large portion of that Series 7 test, which is what every registered representative of a brokerage, of a stock brokerage, or any capacity in the finance brokerage industry, okay, has to pass, is most of that is basically meant to teach you the risks, 
okay? And making sure that you're not lying, you're not misleading, you're not assigning undue risk to somebody that cannot afford that undue risk, et cetera, right? And disclosures that come with basically everything, along with many other things in terms of options, management, risk, how stocks work, margin, et cetera, everything, you know, the basics of the industry meant to protect really customers and consumers so that the people operating in that industry are aware of how it works and aware of the risks and aware of the regulations, okay? Now, what they say here, it is remarkable that they're able to say that Congress has outperformed by 1.2 and by 17.5% last year, but meanwhile, their fund is not going to trade off of Congress's holdings. They're going to trade off of Congress's holdings on a delayed basis of when they are reported. If anybody in the, in the den has any statistics, numbers of how those numbers have performed when they were reported on a delayed basis, because if you're listening to the program, folks, you probably have an idea that 45 days is an eternity, especially if you're trading off insider information as a congressperson, right? Probably a lot of that move already baked into it in terms of 45 days later. Sometimes it was just a week or two. I mean, remember when you had congressmen on both sides, congressmen and women on both sides of the aisle coming into the pandemic, getting briefings, selling, and then within weeks, right, the market cascading to negative prices. Nonetheless, uh, interesting where we go from there in the world of ETFs. Let's talk a little bit of oil. Saudi Arabia, they're jacking up the prices, man. Uh, signaled confidence in demand outlook with the surprise boost in cruise prices while investors awaited what Jerome Powell's gonna say. Saudi Aramco increased most of its prices for crude that will be shipped to its main market of Asia in March amid growing optimism over a robust demand recovery in China following the end of COVID zero. With that, you see a little bit of a lift in the price of crude. I mean, interesting, this bottom we got going on, man. You make it down to 70 bucks on December 9th, and you come down recently. I mean, we had a low on January 5th of 72.46. We just got a low of 72.25 within 21 pennies of that low again. From there, we've risen. I mean, the natural high we're looking at right now, even you know, just on a short term, you're talking about $80 in the price of crude. We're sitting right now at 75.20, but Saudi Aramco in March, yeah, they're saying higher prices coming at you, man. That's the deal. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment. We're going to be coming back. We'll talk about what else we have going on. We got some earnings this week. We'll take a look at some of the equity. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down by 11 right now, trading at 41.12. We have the chairman of the Federal Reserve. He's going to be talking just over three hours from right now, 12.40 a.m., uh, 12 12.40 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. We'll see where the market goes, but it's going to be waiting for the chairman and his comments uh, this afternoon. Jump into the FAA real quick. And, you know, you see why people have a problem with government, man, and everything they do. Some of the years they're talking about here for private company ever came out and said something like this, folks, their stock might go to zero in a heartbeat. The headline here, now this all has to do with the problem that ensued with the FAA having to lock down all flights that were taking place on one morning, when, end of January, something like that, when was that? January 27th, something like that, they have the date in here, yes, January, nope, I'll get the date, either way, you're familiar when they had to close all the flights for a period of time. The FAA needs until 2030. Folks, if you're not aware what year it is, the year 2023 just began. So you're talking about six or seven years at a minimum. And guess what? Anytime the government tells you it's going to take X number of years, probably double it or whatever, right? I'm being sarcastic, folks. Um, but boy, we used to do big things in short periods of time, and it takes compromise to do that, okay? And this isn't divisiveness, but it just goes along with everything going on. 2030 to fix the system that failed last month. I mean, we never like to spend money on things to be proactive, folks. Everything's reactive. The amount of money it cost us with all of those flight interruptions that morning alone, I'm not sure if you put a price tag on that one, but how's it going to take till 2030? And this number started getting talked about, folks, all the way back in 2012. Yeah. So you have the acting administrator, notified House lawmakers that fixes wouldn't be completed until 2030. And Congress first ordered the agency to begin upgrading that system. 11 years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, the 2030 date is several years later than industry groups were told as recently as last year. The only way to do it, folks, is for all of us to hold our elected officials accountable for getting stuff done instead of just spewing the same stuff over and over and over that divides us all. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Have a great Tuesday, folks. Of course, remember, fast market today. Uh, they'll be talking some Chairman Powell at 12. Larry Pesavento, 